remote ID. We all hate it and we wish it didn't exist. But some of us are going to comply with it, whether that's because we actually agree that it's a good thing or whether we just don't feel like taking a chance of getting in trouble uh, if we get caught not complying. And for those of us who are in that position, today's video is pretty freaking exciting because this is one of the Okay, it's not the smallest or the lightest remote ID module I've ever seen, but it is an incredibly small, incredibly light, completely self-contained remote ID module, and it only costs 40 bucks, which is like half or less the price of basically every other remote ID module I've seen. So based on that, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. For those who are late to the party, like, what even is remote ID? Uh, and if you really don't know the answer to that question, then I've got another video. It's about 20, 25 minutes long, and it goes into all the details of, like, what is remote ID? What do you have to do to comply with it? And, like, should you comply? What will happen if you don't comply? And so forth. If you fly FPV drones or RC aircraft in general in the United States, you need to understand this stuff because whether you choose to comply or not, it does affect you. I always say, if you're going to break a law or a rule, then you need to know the rule that you're breaking so you can make a sort of a conscious decision. Like, I want to know if I'm speeding 7 over the speed limit or if I'm speeding 27 over the speed limit. Those are two very different scenarios, even if I was willing to speed. So if you haven't, go check that video out. It's in the video description below. You just pause this one and go check it out. It's probably more important than this specific video. But in short, remote ID means that if you fly a drone in the United States, then it is expected to broadcast certain information. And that can be done with like a DJI style drone. DJI just builds that stuff into the drone and it broadcasts the information that it needs to broadcast. But for a self-built drone, what you do is you put a remote ID module on the drone and that module broadcasts the information and basically by doing that, you're complying with the rules. And here's the thing. Most of the remote ID modules we've seen so far are either they're big, they're heavy, they're expensive, they often cost around $100 or maybe more, or they're tiny and small and light, but you have to like solder them into the drone. And so if you have multiple drones, you have to buy one for every drone and it starts to add up. That's why the product that we're looking at today is so interesting to me. This is the Ruko R111 Remote ID Module, and it is a completely self-contained Remote ID Module. It has a battery on board. It plugs in and it charges via USB, so you don't have to do any wiring or anything. Just get some double-sided sticky tape or some Velcro and stick it on your drone, power it on, and you are compliant. And here's the kicker, it is only like 40 bucks. So it's not the smallest and it's not the lightest, but it's pretty small and pretty light and self-contained so you can move it between your drones and it's like half or less the cost of any of the other remote ID modules that I've seen. And based on that, I feel like it should definitely be worth a look if you're looking to comply with remote ID. The Ruko Remote ID module can be used with this Ruko app, which is available for iOS and Android from the App Store. So it's not even some shady third-party APK you have to download. And one of the things this app does is it just acts as a drone scanner. So it uses the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth radio on the phone to search for remote ID broadcasts in the environment. And then if they're out there, it shows the location of the drones on a map. I have to say, though, I'm not even sure this is the most full-featured remote ID scanning app out there. I'll show you the one that I actually tend to use in just a second. This app is a little bit weird. Uh, one of the things it asks you to do is register the device to the app. So... What I'm going to do is power the module up by holding the power button down and then long press the settings button. There we go. Now it's blinking and now the device shows up here in the app. And if I tap on that, it will actually connect to the app, I guess via Bluetooth, and I can give it a uh, FAA registration number. I haven't actually registered this yet. Uh, an operator ID, uh, aircraft model, my drone, wait. What's weird about this is none of this is actually required by the FAA, really. Oh, I can't put a space in there. Okay, fine, whatever. None of this is actually required by the FAA. 249 grams, as far as you know. The FAA only requires that you register the remote ID serial number when you register the aircraft. And then in the app, I just have to assume this is for convenience sake. I'll save this and then restart the device. Okay, so this section must be just be for settings, and we're not seeing the device here, but if I just go to drones around, yeah, here we go. It is picking up the drone, the remote ID module here, and if I tap it, yeah, okay. So this is the information that it is broadcasting 
as required by remote ID. And then this is just, is that also being broadcast? Operator ID? Wow, I don't want that. Like I'm legally required to broadcast the serial number of the remote ID module so that law enforcement or the FAA can track that back to my actual identity. No, I don't want to put the operator ID in. I don't want that broadcast. Screw you. My operator ID is Nunya because anyone running an app like this can see this information. That's the whole point. Let's do this again. Okay, there we go. Settings. Okay, can change it. Operator ID, Nunya. Aircraft model, Nunya. Can I just delete it? Can I? Do I even have to put this stuff in? No, I have to put it in. Damn it. Nunya. Will it even operate? It seems like this stuff is being installed or stored in the module itself and then broadcast. It's a power cycle. I'm gonna close out this Ruko app because there's another app that I use called Drone Scanner. And that's what I usually use when I wanna do remote ID stuff. I'll turn this module back on. There we go. Oh, look at that. It is, it's broadcasting my, I, my name basically that I put in the module. Fortunately, there's no actual validation of that information, but geez. You gotta see, I think this Drone Scanner app is better. For example, did you notice that the Roku app Ruko app didn't load the, the GPS map underneath. This one has, and it just seems simpler and like all this info is here. It seems like this is a better drone scanner app, but the Ruko app would have to be used to input your identifying information into the module, or maybe the module wouldn't even function. It's a little weird because like, I, if I'm a recreational pilot, I'm allowed to move this module between multiple aircraft. So if I were to say my FAA identifier is X, then like, I don't know. Anyway, there we go though. We have a working remote ID module. We take it out, put it on the aircraft and fly it around. Now, this is the part of the video where you might think that I would strap this to a drone and take it out and fly it around and demonstrate it in real life. And I'm not gonna do that. And here's why. All you need to know about this is, number one, this does have a declaration of compliance from the FAA. I checked. That means that this is a legally recognized remote ID module. And that means that however this performs, does it have good range? Does it have bad range? It doesn't matter. It, it makes you compliant. And that's all anybody freaking cares about. Nobody cares about making this system actually work. They just want to do what they need to do to not get in trouble. And if you put this on your drone, that will fulfill, that'll tick that box. It is small. It is self-contained. It's only 40 bucks. And if you're reading those, if you're hearing those facts and going, well, damn, that's for me, there's a link in the video description below to where you can pick it up. There's something that this doesn't do. And you may have been thinking about it for this whole video, but if you haven't, I'll let you in. What it doesn't do is it won't act as a GPS unit for your aircraft. Like if you think about it, this thing has a GPS receiver in it. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could connect it to our flight controller? And then in addition to being a remote ID module, it could actually feed GPS coordinates to our flight controller and we can use that to do return to home and all that stuff that GPS lets you do. That does exist. I wanna show you a link to another remote ID module called the Phoenix MRID. And it has the ability to connect to your flight controller and act as a GPS in addition to just doing the remote ID bullshit. I'm gonna put a link in the video description below and a card on screen where you can check that out. It's a little more complicated to install because you like you solder it to your flight controller, but the advantage is that you then don't have to have a second GPS unit and that may be something that works for you. Different solutions for different people. That's the whole point. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.